Hi XR developers. In today's video, we're going to look at the pass-through mode on MetaQuest. I'm going to show you how to activate it inside your headset, inside the Unity editor, and of course in our application. We're going to look at different styles of pass-through, such as colors, brightness, saturation, contrast, and so on. And also I'm going to show you the best approach that is recommended by Meta to switch between different layers. For example, if you want to have different pass-through modes with different colors for different game modes. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to create pass-through windows, which means your environment will be virtual and you have a small window that is pass-through. And I'm going to present you in the end my approach of creating the opposite, which is a VR window, which you can use for your applications that are pass-through mode and where you want just a small VR window. If you like this type of content, please take a second to like and subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to get all the source code and all the projects, please check out my Patreon. If you have any questions, or you would like to be part of the XR Developer community, feel free to join us on Discord. The link is in the description. And now, let's get started with Pass-Through. To get started, we want to enable Pass-Through inside our headset. For that, we need to go to the Settings, then Physical Space, and then under Pass-Through, we turn on the Pass-Through mode. Let's now set up a simple Unity scene that we can experience in Pass-Through mode. Of course, we make sure that the Meta XR SDK is installed. You can find several videos on my channel that show you how to do that. The most important thing, as always, is the OVR camera rig with the OVR manager component. We can look for it in the project packages and drag it into our scene. Let's set up our OVR manager first. We then make sure that pass-through is supported under quest features. Also, we need to enable it by checking the checkbox under insight pass-through. Next, we add a so-called OVR pass-through layer somewhere into our scene. It is good practice to do that directly on the player as well. And believe it or not, we can now already use the pass-through mode. Either build your scene or use the MetaQuest Link app. If you are using the Link app, make sure to configure your settings under Beta and then enable the Developer Runtime features and then enable pass-through over Oculus Link. Fantastic, guys. We can now see our real room but let's look at how we can set this up even faster and what we can do with pass-through. Another way of setting up pass-through mode is to simply use Meta's building blocks, which I highly recommend for any developer using the Meta XR SDK. If you don't know about building blocks, please check out my video about it here. Let's clear our scene, open the building blocks tab, and then directly select the pass-through building block. This will automatically add the OVR camera rig for you configure the OVR manager, as well as apply all necessary project settings if you haven't done so already. If you are having trouble setting up your project, just use Meta's project setup tool or watch my setup video here. Let's now take a closer look at the OVR pass-through layer. We can see several properties that allow us to modify how our pass-through mode looks and behaves. The first one is called projection surface and is set to reconstructed by default. The reconstructed surface type will render pass-through using automatic environment depth reconstruction, basically giving us a full pass-through view. The user-defined surface projection allows us to define a surface, and only there we can see the pass-through mode, like for a window or a portal, which we will look at in a second. Next, we can configure the placement, which we can set either to underlay or overlay. Overlay means that the pass-through mode will be applied over all virtual objects, essentially not rendering anything else on our camera. Underlay means that we can see our virtual objects above the pass-through mode. Let me demonstrate this to you by adding a simple cube and placing it in front of the player's camera. We can make use of the building blocks and add a grabbable cube that we can grab with our hands. The building block will add the configured cube and also add hand tracking to our OVR camera rig. Just quickly before you test, I would like to give a little troubleshooting guide. If you are using URP, it can happen that the materials of the cube and your hands are pink. For the cube, you can simply create your own material and apply it to the cube. For the hands, I recommend you to add another building block called synthetic hands. Furthermore, you might get an error about your hand grab visuals. If so, simply open it up and reference your newly added synthetic hands to resolve this issue. Perfect. Let's give it a go. If we now test the scene again, you can see your room with a virtual object in it. Looking back at the pass-through layer, we have another variable called composition depth, which allows us to prioritize different pass-through layers in our scene. The lower the number, the higher is its priority. Next, we can set the opacity, which simply means that if it is set to one, 
we see the full pass-through image, and it will fade out until it is on zero, where we can't see the pass-through image at all and only see our virtual world. Then, a very neat feature is the edge rendering, which lets us color the edges of our rooms and furniture. Lastly, we have a whole section to further customize the look of our pass-through camera. We cannot only show the edges, but we are also able to modify the contrast, brightness, and saturation of the camera. And we can even color the whole pass-through mode by selecting grayscale to color. This is perfect for when you want to change the view of your player, depending on your game state, for example, when your player dies. So, let's actually create a new game object and call it Pass-Through Manager, and then we add two child objects, which both have pass-through layer on them with an underlay placement. We then customize our layers however we want to. For example, add some edge rendering and some color to it. Now, there are a few ways to change between those two layers at runtime. One option is to use the composition depth. So if we place the green pass-through layer on number two and the white pass-through layer on number one, we can see that when we play the scene, we will get the white pass-through, which is on a higher priority than the other layer. Let me now show you how to toggle between our two layers in different ways in a new script that I will call Pass-Through Customizer. In here, we firstly declare two pass-through layers and a boolean. That tells us which layer is currently active. Then in the update method, let me just quickly show you how you can modify the contrast, brightness, and saturation at runtime. We listen for our primary trigger button and use this value to set the brightness of the currently active pass-through layer to the value of our press trigger, which goes from 0 to 1. If you are not used to reading controller inputs yet, make sure to watch my dedicated video about it on my channel. Now, finally, let's switch between our pass-through layers, and I have prepared two different ways on how to do that. Firstly, we use the composition depth. When we press button 1 on our controller, we would like to call the toggle composition depth method, which saves the composition number of our first layer, then sets the composition number of the first layer to the number of the second layer, and vice versa. And then we save again the number of the currently active layer for the next time we toggle, which now of course is the second layer. Lastly, we toggle the boolean to always target the right layer with our brightness changer. Let's go back to Unity and apply our script to the pass-through manager and assign both our layers. Awesome, let's give it a go. As you can see, we can change the brightness depending on how hard we press the trigger. We can also change between our layers instantly. However, this means that basically all the pass-through layers in our scene will be active at all times, which is costing us some GPU performance. So the last approach I want to show you is to enable and disable the layers, which is recommended by Meta themselves. To do that, let's get rid of our first approach and create a new method called toggle enable disable layer. Meta already gives us a enabled property for our pass-through layers. So, literally all we have to do is just to check which layer is currently active and disable that layer, and enable the other one. Let's give that one a try as well. As you can see, that works perfectly too. However, it does have a slight delay, which you can either fix by fading the opacity, or using another method of fading your whole camera view. Awesome guys! Before we end this video, let's look at how to create pass-through windows, or so-called surface projected pass-through. For this, we just want one single pass-through layer, so we disable our second layer for now. We then create a quad that we can size and place however we want in our scene. We can lastly disable the mesh renderer. This will be our window into the pass-through mode. Let's add a rigid body that doesn't use gravity, as well as a grabbable and a hand grab interactable to our object, to grab the window. Lastly, on our pass-through layer, we set the projection surface to user-defined, and assign our mesh to the list. If we want to move the object during runtime, we also check the checkbox that says Update Transform. Perfect, now let's give it a try. As you can see, we now have a small window where we can see the pass-through mode, which can be useful, for example, for showing our keyboard or real monitor in mixed reality. Alternatively, you can even use some building blocks to achieve the same effect. You can either use the surface projected pass-through building block, which implements the same approach I just showed you, 
or there is even another building block called pass-through window. This building block is following a slightly different approach by using a shader on the quad. Try out both and see which one fits you best. Another thing I was trying to create for this tutorial was sort of the opposite of a pass-through window, where the user is in pass-through mode and sees the virtual world through a window. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any indication of this in the meta documentations, and neither is there any building block with this functionality yet. I created a demo scene which I will include in this project for my Patreon supporters that tries to achieve this sort of effect of a virtual window. All I used was a render texture for my window and a camera which renders the virtual world for me. I also created a simple VR window script that allows me to change the camera's behavior to create a more convincing window effect. I also made a script that allows you to place the window on any flat surface using the Mixed Reality Utility Kit. So, if you're trying to recreate Ocean Rift's iconic Mixed Reality mode within a few minutes, make sure to subscribe to my Patreon to get access to my project. I will also try to include new features based on your input, such as scaling the window or creating multiple windows at once. Keep in mind that a much better approach would be to use a dedicated shader, which unfortunately I wasn't able to do for this tutorial. I'm also sure that Meta will soon include a virtual window in its building blocks. I'm curious to see if any one of you guys is able to manage a more convincing effect in the meantime. Alright guys, and that's it! I hope you learned a lot today again, and as you can see, it's extremely simple to enable pass-through mode and style it however we like. Unfortunately, Meta hasn't provided us with a VR window, but I have given my best in the last couple of days to come up with a very simple implementation that you can use, and you can download it now on my Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching this video and your support, and see you in the next one.